Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody slept good last night. I slept pretty good last night. Got to wake up to just a beautiful morning in my house. And uh, I've had a good morning of mopping floors and just feeling that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and just speaking to my heart this morning. And uh, I just have some words of encouragement for everyone. And I hope that this Word of God really just strengthens us together draws us closer together as a family, uh, not just in our homes, but everywhere that we go as we continue to declare the Word of God upon our region. Uh, everybody is familiar with the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, and this is specifically how the Father taught us to pray. And man, so many days I just, I don't start my day with just the simplicity of this prayer but he both spoke to me convicted me uh, and picked me right back up fast this morning through this passage our father in heaven hallowed be thy name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Do you ever really just sit and think about what you're praying right there? That we are praying for Yahweh's kingdom to be here on earth. In heaven there's... There's no anxiety. There's no uh, stretches of our mentality. Uh, we don't have mental disease. We don't have sickness. We don't have fear. Uh, we don't have uh, like sexual spirits in heaven that are tormenting our families and our children. We just don't have it. But right here, the Father taught us His words, His truth that we stand on, right? That we pray for His kingdom to come here on earth what does that mean to you uh, specifically what it meant for me this morning is that I've got to be in a season of my life a new season a brand new one for me to continue to walk out every day what it looks like for the kingdom of God to be right here in Johnson City Irwin Unicoi wherever it is that you live wherever you run you're in California or Texas, it matters that when you pray for God's kingdom to come and His will to be done, that you are the vessels to do it. You are the vessels to do it. We are the vessels. We are the hands and feet. We are the head, not the tail. We are the body of Christ, right? So what is it that you need to do today to see the kingdom of God in your house, in your work, in your community? If you don't know, ask Holy Spirit. Specifically, you know that you can love people. You can meet their needs. You can specifically just go up to anybody that you see that is physically in pain and in that mustard seed size faith, you can pray for them. He commanded us to do it. Raise the dead, right? Heal the sick. Heal the blind. I mean, do we believe what the Word of God says or we feel that that's just a... Is that something that somebody else has to do? That that's their anointing or their calling? But the Word of God says that He anoints you. That He calls us, right? We're chosen. This is for everybody. It's so crucial. You know, in Ephesians 4, when He gives us the fivefold ministry, that's complete unity. Everything that was spoken right there is for us all to step out, unified together, not just one or two people. Uh, specifically what He laid on my heart this morning for something that I can do and I really just would encourage everyone to look at these passages and see how it pertains to you in your life is you know in heaven in his kingdom there is worship day and night night and day and I've got a lot of days where I talk God I talk Holy Spirit and Jesus and where I go but sometimes just through my own laziness sometimes it's from overeating Sometimes it's emotionally eating. I find myself in a position where my flesh just has me distracted as opposed to just 
worshiping God, worshiping Jesus, worshiping Holy Spirit, allowing Holy Spirit to move through me so that my first ministry goes right back up to the throne room. So I just want to dig into some scripture really quick while I have a minute. And uh, I just want to talk about worship and the, the posture of like having an altar in our life where we go before the Lord. Uh, first, I'm going to turn to Genesis 8, verse 20. Genesis 8 is uh, after the 40 days and 40 nights after Noah was and his family were sealed up in the ark for their safety and their obedience. Uh, this is when they've come back on to solid ground and dry ground. And the first thing that Noah did after surviving, the first thing that Noah did stepping out into a new season of his life was he built an altar. And verse 20 says, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord. And at that moment, the first thing that he did was he ministered to the Lord. He thanked Him. So what season are you stepping into in life? What season have you been praying about? Uh, and stepping out into this new season, are you prepared to worship God? Are you prepared to just sit in His presence and behold His face and learn from Him? You know, sit at His feet like Mary did and just get the good stuff that He has to alter. And then once you have been filled in your secret place, run with it. Uh, Genesis 22, verse 5. You know, everybody's really familiar with the passage of when Abraham was taking his son Isaac. And Abraham was just going to, he was going to be obedient to the Lord. But it's also the first mention of the word worship. It says, the lad and I, my son and I, we're going to go up upon the mountain we're going to worship. So some days our worship to the Lord is just going to be sacrificed because that's what Abraham was going to do. He was going to sacrifice his son. And that sounds crazy to our like 2020 man's hearing, you know? But he was being obedient to God. So what is God calling you to be obedient with today? What has he already asked you to be obedient with? Your finances, your household, uh, taking care of those that are around your community. Maybe to some of you, uh, the sacrifice is to be able to, to love your children, you know, to, uh, to not enable those that are around us. You know, we have a lot of folks around us that have been struggling with addiction for years, and they've gotten really good at pulling on our heartstrings, you know, to say specific things to trigger us into uh, to overcompensating for them just not laying down their burdens. So today, I just want to encourage you all, like, love your children. Take care of them. Make sure that they're feeding on the Word of God. Walk beside of them. But find yourself uh, to be in a position to lay that burden down at the altar and worship Jesus. Worship God. And when we lay that burden down, it's in His hands. And we know that we have faith that He will minister to our kids because we are going to lay that sacrifice down in front of Him. And... uh and I'm speaking that to myself, you know, I, I see a lot of folks every day that are struggling with addiction. And the Lord has put me in a place to love on them. And every day, you know, I'm always going to get presented with another question, you know, uh, to help them out in a way that the Lord is not telling me to help them. So each day I'm just loving them, making sure they got something good to eat, something warm to stay with. And to continue to pray with the saints in our region that the Lord is going to open up a door, open up a facility that can house restoration of those who are struggling with their addiction in this area more than just a week or a month long stay talking to you know a counselor that might not know the word of God. Uh, the next place I really want to chew on with building an altar is the Lord has really just been highlighting to me in the book of Ezra. And you know and it's before uh, they started reconstruction on the temple. And before they started building, they built an altar. And it says that they offered sacrifice and worship morning and evening to the Lord. And you know, and just for so long, so many people dedicated their lives to bringing worship before the Lord for everything. And, you know, we live in an instant gratification society. We have so much just laid at our feet really quick that if we... Even if we have food in our house and we have an abundance of food but we don't want to cook, we can just walk out 
the door, get in our car, drive through, knock on a window, and somebody's going to give us some food. The same way that some days we might not even just want to get into the Word of God, but we can get on TV and we can try to scroll through thousands of people to tell us what the Word of God says. But right here, the Word of God is telling me that before they begin construction of the temple, before they were rebuilding the house of God, they worshipped Him. So my challenge to everybody is let's get back into a, a posture in life where morning, noon, and night that we're worshiping, Lord. We're not just giving Him 10 minutes of reading here and there that we're just going to sit and behold His face. Ask Him a question and sit there long enough for Him to answer. That we're going we're to be in a posture to where we're going to open up our homes and worship the Lord <coughs> as a family as a family of believers, that we're not just going to continue to live in a season where we give God 45 minutes once a week and then just go on about our day. And, you know, you know that's my heart's desire, is that the body of Christ is going to love Him so much and stand so firm on what His Word is and be so filled with His Spirit that everywhere we go, that church is taking place everywhere that we go, that the Word of God is going before us, and that we are in such desperation of the Holy Spirit in our life that we can't let go of that vision. You know, Jesus says, It's better that I go so that I can be with my Father. But He sent us His Holy Spirit to go before us, behind us, fill us, teach us, you know, to work through us as vessels so that when we do go into regions that we are seeing those that are possessed, that are afflicted, that are diseased, that are bound with demonic spirits of of homosexuality, of, of sexual sin, of hiding, you know, pornography, uh, lying, stealing, all these things, bipolar, uh, things that just attack our mind. I want to see that go in Jesus' name. And we are, going to, we are going to see that. We're going to be empowered by that when we have this perfect marriage of what the Word of God says and stepping out in the authority of what the Holy Spirit is guiding us in. And I know that that's going to, uh, it's going to elevate, it's going to accelerate at such a rapid pace when we behold His face, when we worship Him. And I guess my question right now is, is, is that something that you want in your life? If so, just ask. Ask Holy Spirit. You know, a lot of folks I uh, hear talk around this area, you know, they're always mentioning, you know, in the days of Noah, and like, things would be crazy, you know. And it was at a time when destruction was going to come upon the world. But also in the days of Noah, there's a beautiful sign of hope. Like the Lord saved Noah. The Lord saved his family. His family. One family got saved. So if you were Noah today, what would your life look like? What is Yahweh asking you to build? And once He tells you what to build, where to dig, where to run, do you have enough faith? Do you believe Him? Do you believe that the Word of God says that He will strengthen your hands and lift your head to run with it? And are you going to not grow weary? You know, the prophet, the Lord spoke to Jeremiah in Jeremiah 12. He's like, if you grow weary in the race with men, then how are you going to run with the horses? So I just ask you now, if you have a desire on your heart to build, if you feel like the Lord is asking you to build something, run with it. Don't look left, don't look right, don't look behind you. Don't have a rear view Christianity where you're always looking at what somebody else did. You're the temple of God. You are filled with His Holy Spirit. Nothing can snatch you out of His hands. He tells you 365 times to fear not. So what are you afraid of? It's time to build. It's time to grow. It's time to create. You know, the tabernacle is not just going to be 24-hour worship, but it's going to be people living their lives 24 hours a day that everything that they do is going to glorify and draw attention back to Yahweh. You know, Noah's family got saved. Noah's family got saved. Your family can be saved. Your family, God wants your family to be saved. So what is it that you need to build in this season of your life? He's telling me to, to build my faith, to have a bigger vision. I look at all these blessings that come my way, and guys, I just want to testify that every single time that the Lord 
puts a desire in my heart and shows me something in this community that there is a need for folks to be provided for, he sends the provisions. I want to tell you, in the past couple of months, our house has been overflown with food. Every single week, there has been different men and women of the body that have come together and continued to bring finances our way for me and my brothers and sisters uh, in gospel community at Rise Up for Kids here in Johnson City uh, to provide for people in abundance, in abundance. You know, it was just dropped on us that, you know, even in our region, that we've got 80 migrant workers or more, 80 is what we know of, that are in this region working and due to quarantine, uh, crops not growing the way that they are, uh, they're hungry. They have needs. They have needs. But every single week, God is providing clothes, shoes, medical supplies, an abundance of food. I mean, an abundance of food every day to where when we fix the same amount of food as we had before, that some days we have twice as much left over. And God says, go feed the people. Go bind up the brokenhearted. Love on them. So I want to say God is really moving in Johnson City and he's building, he's digging up earth. You know, there's seeds that have been planted for a long time and they're growing right now. So uh, ask God this week, where do I need to dig? What do I need to create? What do I need to speak out loud and declare and decree in the name of Jesus? Where's my ark? Where's your ark? Where's your altar? Where's your altar? And when you pray to God for your kingdom to come have faith that his kingdom is going to come but know that he is going to partner with you man because in the beginning you know he gave authority to man over all the earth and when Jesus took the cross he he restored that order to give authority back to us on this earth we don't just have to sit in silence we don't just have to wait for somebody else to do it you are a child of God you are filled with his blood You are Holy Ghost filled, you are sanctified, and all authority in heaven is in you because Christ is in you and you are in God. And God is love. Perfect love cast out all fear. So don't be afraid today. Know that God wants to use you in a mighty way, His children. Holy Spirit, I just ask that for everyone that might hear this message, Lord, Lord, just more of you today. Holy Spirit, fill them with a fresh fire, Father. That where they go, the fragrance of heaven would follow, Lord, and that your living water would flow. Jesus, right now I just ask in your mighty name that you would touch men and women. You would touch children, Father. That the body would grow stronger today. And Lord, that today we would build an altar in our heart, in our homes, in our communities, Lord. And that we would worship you. And Father, that we know that when we worship you, Father, we encounter you. And everything changes when we encounter you, Yahweh. You are perfect and holy. And you are love. And you love us so much that you gave us your Holy Spirit, your Holy Ghost to fill us, strengthen us, empower us. Father, just fill our lamps with oil today that we might shine in our region. Jesus, that we would grow, that we would seek, that we would serve, that we would build, and that we would have faith. That what we ask of you, Father, Lord, that you're a father of good gifts and you will provide. Father, bring back family. Open up doors and houses to family. Open up bars and temples to family, Lord Jesus, Lord. We're praying for revival. May our homes be welcoming. May our cities be welcoming. May our churches be welcoming. May our workplace be welcoming, Father, Lord, to contain the revival revival that is coming, Jesus. And I ask this in your holy name, Yahweh. Amen. I love you guys. And I want to know that every morning my spirit gets stirred up in such a way to just share what is on my heart. Because since God delivered me, that's all I want to do. And y'all that know me, I just want to talk about the goodness of Jesus. Because I was an addict for 21 years. I was a liar and a thief from like second or third grade until almost four years ago. And everybody that knows me knows this. Yeah, I had a lot of love in my heart, and and I still wanted family, and I talked a good game, but, you know, I wore so many masks. I was always pretending to be somebody that I wasn't. But almost four years ago, God delivered me of that. You know what I mean? He set me free. Everything that I ever just took upon me, that that's what I was, like, I'm not that bad anymore, you know? 
So I want to testify how good God is. He's given me a wife that absolutely loves and adores me. He's given me healthy kids. He's given me a home when I never thought I'd be a homeowner. You know what I mean? He's surrounded me with men and women from all over, from all over that walk beside me and they pour into me and I'm grateful for that. So I testify about the abundance of life that the Lord has given me. Charlie and Myra, Tyler, everybody from the prayer room. At a moment in my life where I just needed to know more about the Holy Spirit, He showed me through them. He showed me that I know His voice through those men and women. Brother Jim, there's a man from Africa that rents a gymnasium here at Rise Up and at a moment and season in my life where I wanted to know more about Holy Spirit, I met this guy and ever since I met this man, he absolutely pours the Word of God into me and has provided me with a wealth of knowledge. Michael and Sherry Marion, uh, this was a man that knew I needed this job when I tried to turn it down. I just tried to walk away from it through a text message and he brought me on board. Knowing my past. That maybe he's seen the love of God in me. And, and he gave me a chance. You know the staff here at Rise Up. They, you know, I feel needed around here. And now that I'm starting to know these kids. You know, it's just such a dream to walk beside these young little boys and girls. And just, just plant a seed. Just a little nugget of truth about who God is for them. The Rock Fellowship, Hosanna, you know, the families there, they have walked beside me. And, and just Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church, my home church, Lone Oak Christian Church, which is a body that has walked beside of me through my addictions, through my pain, and they've seen me set free. And yeah, they know I get crazy for Jesus because that's why it is on my heart. You know, I'll never shut up about the love of the Lord. But they walk beside me and they accept me. You know, Lone Oak Christian Church is a place where everybody will always look you in your eyeball. They'll love on you, and they'll open the door for you, and, that, and that's a big deal. They listen to you, you know. Gospel community, the folks that we run with, you know, both in home church and on the street, you know, they've, they've built me up. And it's through these all of these little communities. Like, I feel like God has just allowed me access through the front and back door of all these houses to be strengthened. The United Emmaus community. You know, that's a community of men and women that have walked beside me and helped set me free. Just to absolutely help set me free. Free. Little. I can't even talk. I'm emotional, guys. I'm sorry. But they've helped set me th free, free through the love of Jesus. All of the women through Cairo Southside Prison Ministry. You know, it's a ministry that helps women, you know, walk back to freedom and safety and healing after being impacted by men that's been incarcerated. And all the men through Cairo Inside. All of these ministries that I see around this community that absolutely love the Lord, God has allowed me to live with them. So I really just want to encourage you, like God loves you and He wants so much more for you. And that you just, you need to seek it, you need to step out in faith, you need to run for it. And where He opens up a door for you to run, don't look back because He loves you. I love you guys and I just look forward to, you know, uh, just growing with you. And I just want to encourage you uh, to just repeat with me. Spirit talks to spirit. Iron sharpens iron. And we are children of the high king of heaven. I love you.